Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah continue on in our study of uh, purification and uh, basic fiqh of salat we reached uh, the portion of the treaties where Imam bin uh, Imam Fozan Hafidhullah Ta'ala he mentions about the miswak uh, and acts of natural disposition, meaning those things which are tabi'i or those things which are the fitra that uh, the Muslim should be concerned with, like plucking the armpits in the pubic hair, the Allah, the cutting the fingernails, etc. Uh, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a siwak is a way of purifying the mouth and satisfying the Lord. Uh, related by Imam Ahmed and other compilers of hadith. It is reported in the two sahihs that Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, five practices are of the natural fitra. You know, the natural of, uh, that are, are natural practices of our cleanliness and hygiene. He said, circumcision, istihdad, which is uh, uh, istihdad, cutting the mustache short, removing the hair of the armpits, and clipping the nails. So istihdad is to, is removing the, the pubic, uh, the pubic hairs. Uh, it was also stated as marfu, meaning a traceable hadith, in the two sahihs that Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, cut the mustaches short and le let the beard grow. So for the men, of course, it is from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and because that is an, uh, that's in the sigat al-amr, that is a, in accordance with the command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and there's other a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa will show us that the lihya, the, the beard, is an obligation. The man should not cut his beard. He definitely should not shave his beard, as we see as a common practice. Uh, except now, people are growing their beard, even the Muslims, in order to follow the non-Muslim footballers and other people, which is so strange. Wallahu musta'an. Due to the aforesaid hadith, as well as other related hadith, stressing the same points, the scholars of fiqh derive some rulings among which is preference of using the miswak, which is a kind of a stick in brushing the teeth and gums in order to remove uh, yellowness and, and or, you know, undesirable smell and, you know, to keep your mouth clean. And this is a miswak. Uh, it is stated that using the suwak is one of the practices of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the messengers Alayhim Abdul Salatu Wasallam in general. Prophet Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam was the first to use the siwak. Uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has pointed out that the siwak is a means of purifying the mouth. Uh, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also stated that the siwak is a way of satisfying Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So using a siwak is an act that pleases and satisfies Allah Tabarak Wa Ta'ala. So that means it's an act of ibadah. Anything that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an act of ibadah. So there's uh, the reward, or there's in this life, you gain the benefit of keeping your mouth clean, of course, and dealing with people and, and interacting with others. And in addition, of course, there's ajr. If your intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you receive reward from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Uh, there are more than 100 hadiths stressing the desirability of using the miswak. This indicates that using siwak is stressed act of the sunnah, enjoined and made desirable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and there are many great virtues and the greatest uh, you'll find in some of the hadith, like the siwak is a way of purifying the mouth and satisfying the Lord. Brushing the teeth with siwak is to be done with a soft tooth stick of an uh, arawak tree or an olive tree with a dry date stalk or with uh, some, uh, you know, a tooth stick that resembles it that does not crumble or hurt your mouth. So, of course, the miswak, the intention is not to harm oneself. As the Prophet said, la darar wa la dirar. There is no harming, there's no reciprocating harm. So, of course, 
it is not recommended, it's not desirable, and it's actually impermissible for you to seek out something to damage your mouth. You want to uh, have it as a purification, and you know you should find one that is uh, that is soft and will remove the uh, you know remove plaque from your teeth and etc. Uh, also, the mess according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, the sawak can be observed at all times, even when one is fasting, because there are some fuqaha that even say that say you know at a certain time and while one is fasting they cannot use the miswak. There are some who say this, but this is really uh, probably a qol shad. You know, it's a very strange and rare uh, opinion. But it goes against the Nusus. It goes against the uh, Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu As he mentioned that there's over a hundred uh, uh, ahadith talking about the benefits of the Miswak. So you can use it anytime. Uh, and it's a stress act of the Sunnah. To illustrate, use it Swak as stress when performing ablution. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Lola and shukka ala ummiti ni'amartahum biswak in the kulli salat. The Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, if it wasn't for my fear that it would be difficult for, difficult for my followers, I would have ordered them to use the miswak on performing uh, ablution. So this this actually narration was about ablution. Uh, thus, during ablution, swak is to be used when rinsing one's mouth with water to ensure the purity and cleanliness of the mouth. Uh, using swak is also a stress act of the sunnah to be observed when standing for prayer, whether it is obligatory or no awful. This is because we are commanded upon any act of worship to be in a perfect state of spiritual and physical purity, bef befitting the honor and glory of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because now you're standing before your Lord. When you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is your, uh, your time to uh, that you're being close to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're humbling yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is an act of worship. When you think about worship, you know, humility, humbling, uh, you know, having your heart open and and, and, and repenting and, and, and having sorrow to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala for your sins, opening your heart and chest to receive guidance and to actually worship Him. This is a time when you should be uh in your cleanest state at a minimum. Uh, also, it's from the sunnah that if someone's mouth, uh, you know, that they have a bad smell, that they should use the miswak to also uh, purify their mouth and keep it clean and their tongue. And what's not, and, and how do we know it's from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as far as the tongue? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, one of the Sahaba, he said, that the Prophet Sallallahu used to use the sawak uh, on his tongue, in his mouth, and he would go, uh, uh, ka'anna yatahawwa'u, or kama qala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would almost choke, he would make this sound, uh, uh, that's how it's written in the in the books, uh, in the hadith, that he would make this sound, and that shows us it was sound, ka'annahu yatahawwa'u, and so it was uh, as if he was like, kind of like choking, it was on his tongue, so that means he was really, really, you know, vigilant about cleaning his mouth and brushing his tongue. So that shows that that's a sunnah of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and that we should not uh, be lazy in using the miswak. The way the swak is to be used by rubbing the gum and teeth, starting from the right side of the mouth and moving toward the left, and one should hold the swak with the left hand. Uh, among the merits presented by Islam, the true religion, are the acts of natural disposition mentioned in the in the hadith uh, that we mentioned already, and these are important qualities. And from those acts is istihdad, which means uh, shaving the pubic hair. This act in Arabic is called istihdad because it is derived from the word uh, hadid or hadid had uh, the razor which means like the razor used for shaving the hair. Uh, so removing such hair is a way of beautification as well as purification. Also one is free either to remove it by shaving or anything else. So however you want to remove that hair, the hair into the armpits and the pubic region, the karamakum Allah, then that is permissible or plucking. Uh, another part of the fitra is that's mentioned in the hadith is circumcision. 
that it is the removal, of course, of the loose foreskin covering a male's uh, area. Karmakuma law is preferable to be done during childhood as then it, it heals uh, faster and better. Uh, likewise, the third uh, part of the fifth of that's mentioned is cutting the mustache short. So also trimming the mustache is also from the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in that hadith and that is a way of beautification and purification and unfortunately what we see here now is become really the trend. You see a lot of the youth and I see so many uh, youth my students with their mustaches in their mouth and big old, they love the big ones and they shave their beard. I'm just amazed because it is not attractive to me. It looks horrible. You know, these big giant mustaches like the old cowboys and with the no beard. Okay? Uh, so it's a very strange sunnah that they are practicing. Wallahu understand. And they're doing the opposite of what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered them to do and the Prophet ﷺ said, Men Whoever resembles a people, then he is from them. So why would you want to resemble people who are not practicing the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? And maybe there it's a sign of people who are uh, people of fisk, you know, of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, another fitra that he mentioned there was clipping the nails, of course. He said, clipping the nails is among the qualities of natural disposition. As it is a way of beautification, it means of removing dirt beneath the fingernails and avoiding being just like beasts. This is what Imam Fozan said. Unfortunately, this act of the sunnah is being violated by some reckless youth and light-headed women as they leave their nails without clipping out of blind imitation of the polytheists and contradicting by this the honorable prophetic tradition. So it's from the sunnah, trim the nails and also the toenails. Uh, the fifth thing that was mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, removing the hair of the uh, armpits. This is also among the acts of natural disposition. It can be done through plucking, shaving as a way of purification, getting rid of increased bad odor associated with the presence of such hair. Uh, so all of this is from the sunnah and we already mentioned some of the mufasid, some of the 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 uh, negative uh, of not doing that because the negative usually is coming from following uh, un-Islamic traditions and un-Islamic practices you know and you, you'll find a lot of times you'll see a lot of workers from other uh, countries and from other faiths especially polytheistic, polytheistic faiths like the Buddhists and Hindus and stuff like this and a lot of times you'll see them with very long nails with tons of stuff under them you know and again these are usually probably not the the people who are the higher in their social class in their society but you just see a lot of nasty stuff and nasty practices and people I witness all the time people who don't wash their hands after using the restroom of Karma Kabbalah Law and these are horrendous practices and dangerous practices and they go against Islam, they go against the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu And it always, it never ceases to amaze me when I see a lot of Muslims that, uh, mainly more so amongst the youth, going to the restroom and not washing their hands, Allah, coming out and, you know, and not practicing these hygiene. Look at the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is all about hygiene and fitra. But so many Muslims don't even practice that. You can just imagine if their nails are full of black gunk and you see them not washing their hands anyway and they're always the first ones to come up and try to shake your hand and some of them, Akramakum Allah, and I'm not trying to spread but I just want us to be aware and I want to emphasize this to the listeners, clean your teeth. Follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Use that miswak. I see people don't even use the toothbrush. How are you not even 20 years old and you're missing a bunch of teeth because your teeth have to be pulled. I know so many people like this. I've seen so many people like this, unfortunately, amongst our brothers and I'm sure amongst the sisters too, that they not hygiene. And some that literally you could scrape and it's like cake. And I'm not even exaggerating. And that's because years of plaque. They smile and it's just a, 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 a thick thing there, like a cream, a kramakum Allah. And I, and, and I, yeah, and it's worth emphasizing that. Why? So that way the message is delivered. Deliver the message. If nothing else, you brush your teeth. 
and you practice that in your household. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.